Aloha everybody, it's me Doc here from the unofficial Apple weblog, also known as Tua, and today I'm going to give you a quick overview of some of the changes in the brand new version of iMovie that was just released by Apple. Now this is known as iMovie 10, and if you have a new Mac or a you already purchased iMovie, you will get this upgrade for free. If not, you will be able to purchase this in the App Store for roughly about $15. Let's give you a quick overview of what has changed in iMovie. Now, a few versions back, iMovie came out, they changed the interface, and everyone went crazy because the interface wasn't the way that it was before. Now I'm going to show you that although this looks completely different, as a matter of fact, funny thing is it looks a lot more like Final Cut, I'll show you just how easy it is to use. One of the first things we do when we get a brand new update to a program like iMovie is just take a quick run through the interface and see what the changes are. So I like to start by going to preference files and whoa, right there you'll notice there's only two available preferences. There used to be a lot more, but that goes to show you how they've attempted to simplify this particular program. So let's go ahead and leave things as default and I'll close that. Now, of course, naturally, one of the most important things that you're going to want to do is come in and attempt to um, import some footage. I've already done that. Again, if you are unfamiliar with the new interface, your shortcut key of command I, as in all versions of iMovie, will allow you to do that. I've already taken time to import some of these, but let me connect my iPhone 5S here just to give you an idea. And I'll press command I and you'll see the iPhone 5S is attempting to come on now and you'll see some footage I took from a recent uh, Honolulu night market which is a street festival that we do here now one of the things that you'll notice is in these clips there's a little cog like icon next to some of these videos and those tell me that those were shot on the iPhone 5S with slow-mo option turned on so iMovie 10 does support the importing of the slow-mo clips with the slow-mo intact so if i were to press that and go ahead and say import selected it will be added and as you can see i've already added some of these files now the most important thing of any editing program is well the ability to make a movie so i can press on create here and i can go in and create myself a movie alternatively i could create myself a trailer but let's take a quick look at trailers first and then we'll come back to movies now trailers are these guys sort of invented thematically for by apple for apple by some people in hollywood and they're designed to allow you to take a movie uh, and, and build it really quickly based off of formulas that they use to create trailers in Hollywood. Now, what's really cool about this is it will tell you that, you know, how many cast members you need, how long it is. Um, they will even go as far as to tell you when you need a two shot or a single shot or a landscape or a close up. And so they're really easy to follow along. If you think you are going to want to create a trailer, let me suggest that you look at that type of trailer first so that you can collect the footage according to the recipe you hate to come back later and find out well i wish i had some shots that i didn't really capture so let's cancel that i'm going to also come over here and press create and i'm going to say let's create a movie now like the trailers there's these themes here you can select no theme uh reports um you can do news playful photo album sort of like travel guide i'm going to come in and press simple and i'm going to name the movie Uh, you know what all right so go ahead and select that and it opens up to this new sort of single timeline view what you will see here is for the most part it's sort of the way it was in previous version of iMovie but things are a lot cleaner a couple of things to note that are different is there's the enhance button is here at the top which is automatic and the adjust button is here which gives me things like uh, color balance color correction cropping stabilization and some audio adjustments as far as volume and noise reduction the last one gives me the opportunity to use some visual effects you know things like x-ray or heat wave or whatever or I can do some audio effects based off of getting clean sound or special effect oriented sound. Okay, 
Um, also, I can press this info and it will give me information on a particular clip if I have a clip loaded and it will tell me whether it's been used or not used and things like that. So if you need to revert any of these changes, there's a little hook here that allows you to revert it. But that sort of makes it easy to adjust your clips before you go in and you start to use them. Now, here's a clip and you'll notice that when I kick, click on a clip, that's kind of hard to say, there's a little plus sign that moves around. That's going to tell me my endpoint. If I click that, it adds it to the timeline from that particular position. I'm going to undo that. Typical to any other version of iMovie, if I hover around the clip and I press X, it selects the entire clip. Okay, um, I'll use a shorter one so that you can see it in view. If I press X, I select the entire clip. Now also, like older versions of iMovie, I can just drag a particular region and I know I need a piece that's 2.6 seconds, I can grab that particular piece. And again, simply by pressing, pressing the plus, it will add it to the timeline. So that makes it a little easier because in the past, what you had to do was select this guy and grab it and drag it down. Still works, but that was a little bit hard. I wouldn't say harder, just took more steps. Alternatively, you can always use the shortcut key, which is E, which technically means added to the end. And since this is the first clip, well, there's our end. So if I grab this guy here, press E, it adds that to the end. So let's, uh, let's get rid of those real quick. So that's how you add things to the timeline. Let's go by and just um, pull up one that I started working on earlier just to give you an idea. So I'll double click that and you can see I have a bunch of things already added to the timeline. You'll notice that in this clip, because this came from my iPhone 5S, the slow motion control is there and that allows me to adjust from the preset speeds um, the iPhone automatically brings it in at 25%, but I can move that around accordingly and you can reverse the clip or, you know, do some special effects there. So I'll leave that alone. Um, one thing I would like to show you is here's a clip that needs a little bit of enhancing. So I can go over here to adjust and double click on my color balance and you'll see I have these sliders where I can make adjustments to hue, saturation, value, midtones, highlights, saturation, and color temperature so if you don't want to mess with that there is the automatic which is just press the enhance the other thing that you can do is I have a clip here and let me revert that to its normal look and it's a little dark so what I want to do is while I'm in here I want to match this particular color to a uh, another clip that's already been shot there is the ability to do what's called match color, which says I want that shot to look like this shot and it will go ahead and make those adjustments for me. And now those two clips look similar. Now, as you saw, when I double clicked here, this gives me my precision editor. So as I move this piece back and forth, it lets me get closer to a piece that's exactly where I want to go. So if I want to drop on this beat mark here, I would be able to do that and close the trimmer. Um, the other thing that you'll notice is there's some skin tone balance in here. So we can adjust, you know, based off of clicking various areas in the clip. And you do have the ability to stabilize and fix rolling shutter, which is a common problem with digital video cameras. So let me go ahead and stop that. I'll show you quickly some other things. Titles are here. The ones that are connected to this particular theme show up at the top. If you select anything else, it's going to tell you that you're going to step out of your theme, but it's okay. It will allow you to do that. You do have access to maps and backgrounds. Um, you can grab music from your iTunes. I do warn you that if you do that, you got to make sure that if you're putting it on uh, YouTube or something like that, that they may ask you questions related to your ability or your rights to do that now we have our movie done and we're ready to uh, go ahead and send this out you press on the share button and you'll see that they have your new sort of maverick social features some of this was in the older iMovie but it just made it a little different now i like to send things to a file first because then i can select where i want to go it gives you an opportunity to pick on various compatibilities based on the style that you're attempting to render you can make changes to the size but if you go ahead and press next it's going to render this and add this to the demo reel. I had already one there, so I'll go ahead and press replace. 
and it's going to render it and you'll see there's a progress meter here there's also a progress meter here this is a uh, notification that tells you how many new things you've added to the theater but you can click that and you'll see that it shows up also right here you'll notice there is a little progress icon that lets you know how close to being done the video is and once the video is done it pops up in quick time like such and then we can play the video so that's been a quick run through through some of the interface changes with iMovie. I will tell you again, if you're familiar with old iMovie and you go by the shortcut keys, you won't miss anything. It's just in different places. If you're new to iMovie, you'll find that you'll pick it up relatively easy. But I would suggest that you just take a quick look over into the help, open up the keyboard shortcuts so that you can learn those. It's not a lot of them. You'll be able to pick it up really fast. And the best thing I can tell you is grab your phone, go out there, shoot some things, come back, make a few edits, and in no time, you'll be up and running with the brand new iMovie. This has been Doc for the unofficial Apple weblog, also known as Tua. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please send them to doc at tuaw.com. Once again, that's doc at tuaw.com. And we will see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Aloha.